Hey everybody, welcome back to Esoteric Ramblings. I'm Jesse Arnold, and today I'm going to be giving you my comic haul rundown for Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I got my rundown for today. Uh, new comic book day, November 4th, 2020. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world at large and in America today and all of that. Uh, and I didn't get to do my rundown earlier today, so I'm doing it now a little late again. But uh, here we go. I tried doing a tour video over the weekend, um, but I rambled on. It went so long, and I just didn't have enough storage on the phone to process the video to upload it. So I'm going to try to tweak it, uh, reshoot it, and uh, give a better, a better tour later this week. So that said, I'm going to jump right into my countdown, or my haul. Uh, event book, alphabetically, and then uh, doing top three this week, and then a special... Uh, graphic novel uh, plug at the end that I really enjoyed. So, just get right down to it. Uh, first up is Ten of Swords, X-Men, issue 14, part 12 of 22. It's a great issue with Apocalypse and his uh, wife, uh, long-lost wife, to uh, Araco. Next up is X-Men... Wait... Sorry, Marauders, number 14, issue 13 of 22 in the Ten of Swords crossover. This was a really cool issue. Uh, Storm and Death getting to interact in uh, Otherworld. That was a fun That was a fun one. Next up, Amazing Spider-Man 51 LR for Last Remains, the next chapter in the Last Remains storyline, where uh, all of Peter's spider friends are infected or possessed or whatever by the kindred and uh, the thing Spidey is trying to do to move on. And this issue deals a lot with uh, Sin Eater again, so bringing him back in. Atlantis Attacks, number four, a long, long awaited return to this series. I've really enjoyed all the stuff with uh, these team, this team. Um, uh, Wave, uh, she became a favorite of mine on the, the Marvel Future Fight game. Um, I have not played in a while, but she was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed her and some of the other characters in this book. Uh, yeah, so Atlantis Attacks uh, is back, and uh, this is great. I think there's only one more issue to finish out this story, but I have enjoyed the two or three miniseries they've done with this team over the last year or so. Uh, so if you want to check out uh, so it's got Wave and the Amadeus Cho version of the Totally Awesome Hulk. Uh, I guess he goes by Braun now. Uh, Silk is in it, White Fox, uh, and a couple other characters that I believe were first introduced in the Future Fight game or other games. Uh, but yeah, really cool seeing them interact with uh, the old team of Atlantis, or Atlas. Like, yeah, Atlas. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think this was Agents of Atlas. Uh, in the previous series, so yeah, really fun. A lot of stuff comes to a head in this issue, and yeah. Next up, Avengers 38. Now that the Age of Conchu story is finished, we're moving on to this Mephisto story that seems to have been brewing off and on through different subplots uh, in Jason Aaron's run here. Since the beginning of this Avengers book, bringing in uh, what looks like might be the uh, was it BC Avengers or whatever they call it, prehistoric Avengers and their version of Phoenix. Uh, I know they're getting ready to do a story with that soon, so it looks like that's going to all weave into this whole Mephisto storyline. Black Widow, number three. Uh, this, this issue is great. Um, again, an awesome Arthur, uh, or Adam Hughes cover. Uh, right there for you. So Black Widow number three. This has been a really great series. I have been really enjoying it. Uh, Natasha has been kind of taken out of her life and programmed into, or not programmed, but put into a seemingly normal daily life with a, a husband and a son, and we're not sure. We're following Bucky and uh, uh, Hawkeye as they're trying to investigate what's going on with her and whether they should get involved and it's fun again another issue where a lot of stuff comes to a head I believe this is also a five issue miniseries so there's two left in that 
Deadpool number eight is next on the list. I was really intrigued by this cover. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and by the end of the issue, I really got... Uh, you get to know what's going on by the time it wraps up. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. It's a really different look for a Deadpool cover. Um, but being a huge fan of Elsa Bloodstone, having her in his book has been a constant uh, delight each each month when that comes out. Oh boy. Speaking of <laughs> interesting and fun books, Money Shot number 10. This is the end of the second arc and possibly the end of the series. Uh, this has been a great run from Vault Comics, and I really enjoyed this book. It is not a book I would have ever initially thought I would enjoy, but it is really funny, really well written, uh, gorgeous artwork, and it's just, it's a, it's a fun ride. It's definitely not for uh, young readers or, uh, it's, it's definitely an R-rated book. Uh, so take that into consideration, uh, any of you who are watching this that don't know anything about it. Um, definitely look into it. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. I've talked about it in some of my other videos, but yeah, great shot. Uh, great ending to Money Shot number 10. Up next is Star Wars number 8. This uh, Will of Tarkin storyline or a couple issue arc. Uh, this was a great issue. They've really introduced a great... Uh, Imperial uh, villain uh, Commander Zara, or Zahar, Zahar, Z A H R A. Uh, she's been in the last couple issues, and I don't know if I've read her in any other stuff or if she's in any other books or storylines with Star Wars, but uh, she's been a fun addition to the Imperials. Really appreciate that and uh, the story of her very, very much going after Princess Leia. Uh, and it's definitely the last couple, she's been very more tactical. Uh, in the execution of what the storyline is, and I've really been enjoying that because you know usually in Star Wars it's just ships zooming around and everything, and I like sometimes when they get a little more methodical, they get more into the military aspect of it. Even though I don't really know anything about that stuff, uh, it's it's nice to see that it is a part, and someone is thinking about it and making it digestible to someone like me. Okay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Jenica, Volume 2, Issue 1 came out today. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Again, like with all the turtle stuff, I am really digging it, really loving it. This feels like it fits seamlessly into the regular IDW series. Uh, yeah, it's different uh, as Bram Revel is doing the series, uh, but the personality of Jenica fits so well with her mainline story series and the things going on here. Uh, definitely can see how these are going to play into the ongoing series. So check that out. Jenica 2, Issue 1. Um, it's a great another miniseries. If you missed out on the first one, I believe there's a collection out of the uh, previous series. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know who she is, she was a... Spoiler alert. This has been many months, and this is no longer news, so I feel free sharing this. Jenica was one of the foot soldiers when Splinter and the Turtles uh, overtook and defeated Shredder and took over the Foot Clan. The Turtles kind of got out of there, but Splinter stayed as the head of the Foot Clan, and Jenica was one of his most loyal uh, guards or soldiers, and she, ninjas, eventually became friends with the Turtles and was helping the orphans they were taking care of, and uh, through some tragic events during, I believe it was the uh, City at War storyline, she was wounded badly and needed to be revived, or healed, they couldn't get her to the hospital, so they gave her an injection of a form of the mutagen, which turned her into a turtle, and so that's where she comes from. And she has fully been accepted into uh, the Splinter Clan now as their sister, and it's been really fun getting to know her and the different people in this world of Mutant Town, as this is taking place within the sealed-off city portion of the city of New York, where all the mutants live because someone set off a mutagen bomb that converted a whole bunch of people. Uh, into mutants um, and it's very interesting very good and this Jenica series is great okay last one in the countdown is Young Justice number 20 another finale uh, this is the end of the Young Justice line uh, at least for now I know we have a Ginny Hex one shot coming soon uh, but this is the end of this team as it is at least this creative team 
as DC's uh, getting ready to launch into the new year and all the new stuff they have going. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But yeah, great, great run. Um, Bendis did a great job telling the story. He writes uh, younger characters so well, and this team dynamic has been a lot of fun. Most of these characters I've never really followed before, and I had a blast reading this series. So thank you, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, and uh, the artists and colorists and letters, and everyone who worked on this series. It has been a blast, and I really enjoyed it. All right, my cover of the week, I didn't really uh, plan this out correctly, but my cover of the week is, of course, the Black Widow number three, Adam Hughes. I mean, come on. This is just fantastic. Uh, it's great, great cover. Um, Deadpool's probably a close second uh, this week. That one was really good. And the the Ten of Swords Marauders, uh, 14, with uh, Storm and Death. I, I really, really love just the, the giant sphere of light behind them. And just, yeah, it's a great composition. So a lot of great covers this week. And now my top three, as I'm really rambling on here. Origins, number one, new from Boom Studios. This is a really cool post-apocalyptic future world, but instead of everything being desolate and wasted and gone, it's green and lush and overgrown, and there's very few characters so far in the series, and just really kind of getting to know them and meet them. But yeah, definitely check this book out uh, if you like anything like that. I will show you uh, just the first page just to kind of give a little bit of the interior art. Uh, it just says, na uh, then. So there is a bit of a time jump within the actual story, but it is definitely set at some point in the future from now. New from Image Comics, number two on my countdown is Crossover, a book that examines how real are we in the real world versus characters like Superman who will live long after us. And as this cover suggests, comics are so powerful, they will literally melt your face off. Um, this book was a lot of fun. Uh, Donny Cates, who's had a lot of success recently with Marvel and his Venom and Thor stories, um, doing this image book. And he's done lots of other things, but uh, yes, uh, it was really good. I enjoyed it, and it wasn't until I read the little... Uh, essay or post at the end of the book where he talks about this from the author uh, that I found really interesting um, back here really sold me on it uh, like it was good and I thought alright this is fine I'll give it a couple shots and a couple issues to try it out but that really really sold me on the book and I, I can't wait to see where it goes next plus some of the things in there I don't want to spoil it but basically what happens when superheroes cross over into the real world and it's not, it's kind of what I expected but totally not what I expected at the same time uh, I don't want to say too much about it to spoil but definitely if you like that kind of meta real world comics kind of thing going on uh, it's got some humor but it's also a little serious and there's drama it, it's fun it's it's good definitely check it out and for the first time in a while, Captain Marvel is back to my number one spot on, on the list. Uh, this issue is great. It picks up after issue. Uh, this is 23. So 22 sees her back in the future of the Captain Marvel, the end story from the last year, I believe, where uh, in that future, the world was dying and the sun was about to go out or had gone out and she sacrificed herself to restart the sun. This story follows our current timeline, Carol, has gotten transported into that future after the events of that The End one-shot. And uh, you're seeing her meet uh, the characters we were introduced to in that end shot. So it's some of her friend's kids who are now grown up, or other kids. Uh, there's the daughter of Rogan Gambit is part of this story. Um... Jessica Drew's son is part of it. So yeah, it's it's really fun. It's really great. Uh, again, great humor, great storytelling. Um, so bravo to this team. We got uh, Kelly Thompson writing, Lee Garbett artist, uh, Balin Ortega on the flashback scenes, and Antonio, Antonio Fabella on colors. And yeah, 
uh, Jorge Molina on the cover here. This is also a, a great cover. Um, it doesn't really address anything that's going on in the actual issue, as many comic covers are, but uh, it's a gorgeous cover. So that brings it through my rundown for the week, and normally I don't talk about the graphic novels and collections I get, or I, I haven't so far, um, but this one really stood out um, that I wanted to talk about it now. I'll probably do a longer review on it down the road, uh, more in depth, but I wanted to at least throw this out there. Uh, one of Those Days uh, by Yehuda Devere and his wife Maya Devere. This is a gorgeous, beautiful, funny, amazing collection of their webcomic, uh, One of Those Days, that you can find. Uh, just search one of those days online on Instagram, Facebook, and you will find it and follow it and all that. Um, each, I'll just flip to one here. Um, so each page has a black and white kind of base one and then like a full out color one. So here you got the basic drawing and then the full color rendering here with the, the text and everything. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's just the story of this couple uh, and their life together, just in kind of one shot, um, like one panel comics per per day, and they're they're great. It's it's funny and hilarious and heartwarming, um, and I love it. They don't shy away from showing the less than glamorous sides, um, but yeah, it just feels like this is a project they had a lot of fun on, and uh, yeah, and it it's it's great. So. If you can find a copy of this, uh, your local comic shop, bookstore, see if they can order it. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this. One of those days. It's a nice big hardcover. Um, I flipped through it fairly quickly, read every page. Uh, like I said, it's not a lot of reading, but there's such a story through these single page uh, uh, comics. So, so yeah, that's it. That's it for my haul this week, my rundown. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week. And yeah, I'll be back. Hopefully I'll get a, um, I'll definitely be back with a short Mandalorian chapter 10 review on Friday. Um, and hopefully I've got a busy weekend, so hopefully I can get my uh, tour in at some point. So yeah, there it is. I'm going to sign off here. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.